In 1850, a 20-year-old Bavarian named Levi Strauss joined the thousands of adventurers seeking their fortunes in the California gold rush. Levi Strauss arrived in California with a roll of tent canvas under his arm, hoping to make pocket money by selling the tough fabric to miners. He soon learned that the miners had a problem more serious than leaky tents. They couldn't find pants that could stand the rigors of the gold field. Knees wore through quickly, and pockets ripped when filled with ore samples. Levi Strauss fashioned a pair of pants from his tent canvas and fastened the pockets with a copper rivet. Levi's tough pants were an overnight sensation. As the American West grew, miners, cowboys, railroad workers, and lumberjacks all depended on the pants that became known as Levi's. Levi Strauss's company has grown and prospered. Since the end of World War II, it has greatly expanded product lines and distribution to the point where Levi's are worn by people around the world. In addition to the classic denim, there are lines of children's wear, leisure clothes, and accessories. Through its early days and times of economic expansion, Levi Strauss has relied heavily on its workers and has maintained strong employee loyalty. Since its rough and tumble beginnings more than a century ago, Levi Strauss has become a billion dollar a year organization. It employs 30,000 people in 70 countries around the world. And in many people's minds, it works better than a lot of other countries. With us today are some people from Levi Strauss who may be able to help us understand how and why that's true. The Vice President for Personnel and Corporate Relations is Mr. Al Nathy. He's also a director of the corporation and has been with Levi Strauss for 17 years. Kit Durgan is an administrative assistant in the Treasurer's Department. Kit has been with Levi Strauss for seven years. Right? And Emil Knopf is a chief designer in the Boys Wear Division. Emil has been with Levi Strauss uh, for 24 years and began as a cutter. Is that right? That's correct. That's interesting. Mr. Nathy, did Levi Strauss himself have any particular ideas on how the company is supposed to relate to its employees? What did, what did old Levi have to say about the people who worked for him? Well, when Levi Strauss uh, founded the company 125 years ago, his first concern was for the consumer, the customer. And uh, he was very concerned that the pants that he originally first made for the miners uh, were satisfactory to the customer. And uh, for that reason, he discovered that the miners were having some difficulties with uh, holding ore in the pockets. And that is how one of the changes in the uh, Levi's pants was made, and that is by adding rivets to the pockets. That is typical of his concern for consumer satisfaction, and that has carried through today in our company policy of uh, being very concerned of consumer satisfaction. He was also uh, extremely uh, concerned about the welfare of his employees, both on the job and their families and their, and their welfare off the job. And employees who have worked, who worked with Levi Strauss have recorded many incidents of his taking care above and beyond normal requirements of their concerns and problems. What sorts of things did he do? Well, if uh, there were illnesses in the family, he made sure there was proper medical care for, fam for members of the family. Uh, he didn't just uh, end his concern uh, at the end of the working day. He made sure his employees, uh, uh, if they had difficulties, uh, had some help. Uh, he was also concerned with con community projects and was active in supporting activities in San Francisco. Uh, one of the projects that he founded in 1892 was a scholarship program at the University of California for uh, members of employee families. That scholarship program is still in the existence today and it has since been expanded, but it is, it is still there providing scholarships for children of our employees. These are examples of some of the founding principles uh, of Levi Strauss, which are carried on today. Well, if they're carried on today, Kit, you're in the Treasurer's Department. 
dealing with dollars and cents. What's in it for a Levi worker today? Well, I think, um, let me back up a little bit. I think that this whole tradition that Al is talking about is carried on right up until now. Um, my boss, Bob Kern, is the treasurer, and he tells me about and shows me pictures of dinners they've had. The whole company had an annual dinner together, and the whole company was, what, 50 people? This was 20 right. years ago. And um, everybody had stock, and everybody was included in every decision. So uh, right now, I think we're growing very, very fast, and, and it's hard to keep up with that personal attention. But for instance, we just recently had the billion dollar stock recognition plan for all employees who had been employed for six months. Mm -hmm. Received what, what, what at least mean? one what, what does share. that mean? Which the billion dollar stock recognition plan. What well, happens? Levi hit a billion dollars in sales for the first time in its history, which you mentioned earlier. And the top management was concerned that everybody be recognized for their part in reaching this level of sales. And they decided that each individual should receive some number of shares, which was determined by how high you were, grade you were and how long you had been with the company. We had a formula. Or for some employees, it was a cash award. Right. If right. in the plant communities where perhaps the stock certificate wouldn't have been as meaningful, they gave him the compensating check. Emil, you started out as a, a fabric cutter mm -hmm. 17 years ago? No, almost 24 years 24 ago. 24 years ago. Well, working from there up to your present position as designer, has it always looked like Levi Strauss had a, a special eye to its employees? That's the one of the reasons that I stayed with the company, because they provided an opportunity for advancement. You started out in one position with the intention of uh, advancement, and it was up to you, really, not to the company, to educate yourself to reach a certain position. You were always given an ear of uh, your superiors and recommendation when you reached a certain goal. So I, almost, I went through all the paces from cutting to production to running a plant to design. Now, in 1971, Levi had its first public sale of stock, went public for the first time. At that time, there was an insistence, management insisted, that uh, relatively small blocks of stock be sold to employees. Why? Why bother with small blocks of uh, stock to employees? Well, this was unusual, uh, an unusual request and insistence on the part of our management because the uh, stock underwriters, as a uh, general practice, uh, don't, don't usually uh, want to provide a block for a group of employees or a special group of investors. But because of the company practice, of selling stock to employees, which had gone on over 120 years at that time. Uh, the management of the firm felt it would be, in all fairness, it was uh, right to reserve a certain block of the public issue, particularly for those employees who were fairly new employees or, for whatever reason, had not had the opportunity to buy any substantial amount of stock. So for that reason, upon going public, they were offered an opportunity to do so. What about when workers retire? Well, when workers retire, we have benefits to provide retirement pensions for them. We also counsel them prior to retirement, which is customary today, but we, we do have a program to do that. And in the whole area of compensation, and salaries. We, as a company, have a policy uh, of paying salaries and benefits which were equal to or hopefully better than those in, uh, in industry, in competitive industries. And so our salary scales and our benefits like profit sharing, pension, and uh, insurance are geared to be competitive or better than competitive programs. To some groups of employees, these benefits may take the form of profit-sharing awards. To others, it may be a pension program, uh, which is given to the employee either at the time of retirement or if he terminates prior to retirement, he is given the cash award equivalent. 
our life insurance policies, uh, to a large extent, are paid by the company rather than the employee. And we have a full benefit package. And that's probably one of the reasons why our turnover of employees is lower than that experienced in the industry. Let's um, take that just a bit further. We're talking about who's buying stock, which <coughs> raises the question of who's working for Levi Strauss. Um, in the garment industry, uh, there are large pools of labor in certain areas of the country, and manufacturers of uh, apparel locate in those areas. And there are questions raised from time to time as to why people aren't paid more in the industry, why it is one of the lower paying industries. Uh, what is Levi's philosophy when you go into an area and open a plant, uh, Mr. Nathy? Well, when we locate in a plant, we make sure that the in a city, uh, we make sure that that city will permit the company to carry out its uh, operations within the policies of the company. And this includes its policy of affirmative action, equal opportunity employment, and uh, giving opportunities to all uh, for uh, job fulfillment. Uh, by the nature of the work, and by the nature of the job skills, historically, most of the jobs uh, in the uh, plants are filled by women because of, because of the skills involved in sewing and garment construction. Uh, this isn't necessarily uh, going to continue in the future. It could change uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, there is automation of the manufacturing process, which is developing, and we have pioneered as a company in furthering that automation. And secondly, through the Affirmative Action Program, uh, we are trying to uh, uh, fill jobs, typically filled by women, with men, and have had some success in doing that. So over the years, the mixture of men versus women uh, could well change for those reasons. Now, you talk about affirmative action, but that's a rather popular catchphrase, and as a matter of fact, it is law in many parts of the United States now. Uh, is Levi just complying with the law, jumping on the bandwagon? Well, long before the affirmative action program became a requirement by law, uh, Levi Strauss and Company was cited by various agencies for following what was then called fair employment practices and received awards for doing so. Uh, we were among the first in the industry, the first in the industry, to insist that our plants, particularly in the southern areas of the country, be integrated and uh, with equal employment practices, that is, equal opportunity for minorities as well as whites. And uh, we were the first to do that in the industry, and uh, this is one of the requirements whenever we go and locate a new plant. But the company has long followed equal opportunity fair employment practices long before it became a legal requirement. It just believed in it, and it has followed that through the years. May I add to this that I've noticed in some of our plans that we have handicapped people, such as people That's as right. blind, but that is very difficult to train to operate certain machinery. And they are employed, men especially, I've noticed in one of our plans, there are two blind people who are employed operating machines. That's right. Emil, you've, you've worked on the floors themselves and in your present job as designer in boys wear, you're out in the manufacturing plants quite often. Mm -hmm. Making Levi's products couldn't be much fun from a fun point of view. There's a lot of hard work involved at the sewing machines and so forth, and yet the quality of the Levi product and the, uh, the uh, uh, work standards of its people are very, very high. I disagree with you on the fun business. I think, think it's, it's really, fun? it is fun for the operators to uh, well, be assured that they have they produce something that is quality oriented. How does the company encourage this quality? Well, we have very stringent quality rules, and uh, the quality is encouraged by training the people properly. They have training programs for each new employee in every plant, and that employee is paid on an hourly basis until they reach a certain percentage of production. Then they are put on the regular production basis. So they are taught quality in the plant. Every employee is taught, no matter if, even if they have experience from another plant, they're still retrained. 
to our way of doing things. And quality-wise, that's what we insist. As a matter of fact, that's part of my duty is to insist that our garments do not pass if they, are not, they don't reach a certain level of quality. How do you instill the pride? Well, it's a question of management. The manager is instilled with the pride by his superior, and he instills the operators and the supervisors. And they are recognized uh, for it. Uh, you are proud to say, I work for a plant that produces something that is guaranteed. Uh, we, for instance, uh, guarantee every garment, a new one if it uh, doesn't meet its specifications, its quality. There's an effort being made now. We talked about job enrichment before, and there's an effort being made at one of your plants uh, to expand the responsibilities of certain jobs of operators, sewing machine operators, and so forth. W is this an experimental project? And if so, how's it going? We have a job enrichment program, which is experimental in nature, underway at our plant in Albuquerque for the purpose of making the job of sewing and constructing Levi's more self-fulfilling, more satisfying to the employees. Emil, perhaps you could comment further on that. Well, this is a group incentive type of program where a group of people would be given a certain responsibility and they can interchange. Uh, for instance, women are being trained as mechanics in that same plan. They will take care of the equipment as well as the sewing. What is their incentive for doing this? Oh, well, they, there's an advancement in pay. There's a certain amount of satisfaction of not doing a repetitious job at these old times. Uh, we have, uh, at present, in most of our plants, several operators in each plant that knows more than one operation. But uh, normally, these people prefer to stay in one operation because the pay is better, they are better experienced. But in this type of uh, program, uh, there is an incentive for everyone to try out different things and work as a group. Is there any objective measure of how well it's working? Is productivity increasing? Well, it's still being experimental. So uh, actually it's being supervised by a psychologist. Yes, we've, we brought in some special skills, and special uh, backgrounds to d develop this program. We think it's going well, but it's too soon to give you final results. What has been the role of unions in the development of, of corporate employee relations in Levi Strauss? Is it a highly unionized company, and uh, how are those uh, union decisions made? At Levi Strauss and Company, we have uh, both types of plants, both union and non-union plants, and work well uh, with both types of organizations. Uh, actually, I think about three-fourths of our plants are unionized, and uh, some were unionized when we acquired the plant. Others became unionized uh, under our management. Essentially, the decision is made by the employees through a union election and we abide by their decision. Uh, we have had very little uh, labor stoppage uh, in labor relations over the years. In fact, I think over 125 years, there's been work stoppage of one or two days. Looking forward, now that Levi Strauss is a <clears throat> billion dollar corporation, looking forward to the next uh, 20 or 30 years, the rest of this century, what will be the significant issues within the company between management and labor. What sorts of things will people be talking about and dealing with? Well, that's hard to project. Uh, I would think we would have a continuation of good relations between management and our employees. It's a close, intimate relationship because we do have an open door policy. That open door policy means that an employee can be heard, either through a suggestion program or speaking to a supervisor or if there's a grievance and it's not being heard at the, at the uh, lower levels, the office of the president and the chairman of the board have an open door policy and a letter to that office or an appointment with that office is obtainable to all employees. And uh, we think that is one of the strengths of the company and we would see that continue and uh, work into an even closer, closer relationship between employees and management than today, and uh, probably working toward greater participation of all of our employees in company operations. Now there, go ahead. I think that's going to be the biggest problem, is to maintain what the original ideas are and 
for the people who want to maintain them, being top management. To when you're growing so large and you're so big, to communication becomes difficult at any level, mm -hmm. business or social. It hasn't. It's a big problem. Not just be like any other corporation, mm -hmm. but uh, retain as much as possible of the original ideas that were incorporated into the And to educate trust. people yeah. on company policies and benefits and, and so I may add another, for instance, I have an assistant who is Chinese, and his English is a little bit uh, rusty. I, he goes to school twice a week on company time, day school, to improve his education. This is one of the policies that the company allows, on the discretion of the manager, for a certain period of time. This raises another important point, not just English and uh, foreign national employees, but uh, Levi's manufacturing as well as selling in many foreign nations. You have manufacturing plants in how many different countries? We have manufacturing plants in uh, approximately a dozen countries around the world. We sell in 70 countries and uh, have worldwide operations. And of course, we have a sales force around the world and we have uh, uh, affirmative action working in that sales force also. We have a great many women now who are sales representatives and are doing a good job and thoroughly enjoy the work. Uh, but we have worldwide sales and marketing manufacturing operations. Now, do, do the principles that are encouraged by the Home Office in domestic production and sales of Levi's apply to your overseas manufacturing plants? They apply throughout the world. Yes. I've read somewhere uh, recently where there's a statistical figure that about 7% of the Levi's sales force are female at present. And that's one of the highest, uh, I think, for any company at present. Yes, we're leaders in that area, I would say. Is there a plan for <coughs> expansion of overseas marketing and manufacturing within Levi Strauss? Yes, there is. There is. Uh, a great deal to be done in expanding overseas markets. Uh, we've been in international business a relatively short period of time as opposed to the, to the, uh, to the history of the company. We're 125 years old. We're in international business uh, approximately 20 years. And in many of the countries we have, while we have a uh, dominant or a large share of the market, it is nowhere near the per capita uh, dimension of the U.S. market. So there is a great deal of growth remaining overseas. And we would expect that would be part of the objectives of, of the future. In a year of international recession, Levi Strauss had its biggest year ever, and the growth seems to continue as it has ever since Mr. Levi Strauss himself made his first pair of jeans. If you had to sum up in a few words why the Levi Strauss company works and grows better than a lot of other companies, what would you say, Mr. Knopf? Well, I would say our employees' enthusiasm is the major part, and our quality is probably is the foremost. And most of our employees do a better job because they, they have their hearts in the work. And that goes for management, as, as well as for our operators. And I think that's the, the secret of the, of the success of this company. As Get long there. as it continues, it will stay that way. I couldn't agree more. I think that's exactly what it is. It also helps that denim is pretty big right now, <laughs> well, worldwide. But any product. <laughs> I think, I, th I can't imagine that it would ever fall off at all. Mr. Nathan? To that, I would add, the strength of the name Levi's itself. It is a worldwide name like Coca-Cola or some of the uh, few widely known brand names, and it is one of the strengths of the company. Uh, but it isn't just uh, idly done to keep it that way. Our designers like Emil, our merchandisers, our marketers are constantly studying consumer trends in style, life culture, and adopting our products to the wants of the people. And uh, I think that is why, even in spite of a re recession, we had a good year this year. Uh, we had the products that people wanted. If there's any particular thing that you could change or expand in Levi's, what would it be? 
while I think each of us would answer it a different way at the moment because of the uh, affirmative action program and the, and the desire of all of us to upgrade employees, particularly minorities and women, uh, I think uh, uh, my answer would be that more training opportunities should be provided to the employees. Kit, you're in middle That's management. That's exactly what I would say. I think there needs to be a place where someone can go for career counseling, for training at a higher level, not just how to run a typewriter or answer a telephone, but where do I go from here? I have a bachelor's degree, and I've got seven years of experience at Levi. I'm a pretty good administrative assistant, but what do I do now? Um, we're, and as the company grows with the divisions, how do I get into a division? you know, from corporate. Um, and I think the other area is, that will need continue, continuing attention is education of employees about the benefit plans and, and what they can do and what their options are in the profit sharing plan and the pension plan, whatever, if they can contribute as well. When do they become a member? What does it mean for them? Especially at the lower levels where it needs to be put forth in a more elementary language and perhaps when they become eligible sit down with them do you have questions Emil what needs attention well I think the most attention that we the company needs presently is to keep its present programs not to let them slide by mm -hmm. that's the main uh, keep it uh, the way it was set up as Levi Strauss and not as any other corporation thank you all for being with us we've enjoyed it very much thank you, thank you.